So what are you doing <laughs> over the? So uh, are you're doing? looking. You're looking at fall, possibly. Yes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But I know that even though it's not open to the public, you and your staff there at the Sanguinetti House mm -hmm. are still busy. What are you guys working on this summer? Well, first of all, I just want to mention the staff has has. Uh, is me and a couple of very chatty mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you talk to them, do they oh, respond? Uh, yes, <laughs> one does. He's mechanized so that he ah. can move, oh, okay. uh, Klaus Vandermeeden, mm -hmm. and uh, he started to move on his own the other day. So mm -hmm. I think that would probably be somewhat disconcerting if one is alone. And, and, and I, if I was you, I'd, I'm going to go hang out in the garden for a oh, little yeah. bit. I'll come back. Oh, it I'll prompted a call. <laughs> I can tell you. But anyhow, no. Um, but what we're working on, and and by and I, though it, I am the only one on site. I have a powerhouse of Arizona Historical Society staff hyper focusing on this museum. And so we're not alone here. And uh, we're using this time for facility enhancements. The 100 plus year old roof is getting a, a repair. Thankfully, you all were talking about monsoon season yes. just a few minutes ago, and that scares me. Uh, so we are getting a refresh with our roof. Uh, the exhibit inside the museum, at last, is going to tell the story of E.F. Sanguinetti, the proprietor of the home. Mm -hmm. Throughout the years that I've worked there, which is about seven, mm -hmm. uh, we've told all different stories of which E.F. Sanguinetti was part of. But now, as we go into the fall, the museum will reopen with a focus on our main man himself, E.F. Sanguinetti. That is so awesome, and, 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 and if anybody has been there, it has always told a story of yes. the family. Yes. And what integral parts, you know, they played in our community. Mm -hmm. So how is that going to be different from the actual story of, of E.F. Sanguinetti? Well, um, we always have told Sanguinetti's story, uh, but it hasn't necessarily always been the main focus. I see. Now, I mean, Sanguinetti was was a powerhouse. I, I don't mean, think people realize. Oh no! That. Oh no! He he was the perfect inspiration for what we're going through right now because he looked at troubled times, he looked at challenges, and he didn't see obstacles. He saw opportunities, and he created a a an empire of businesses that were problem solvers. You had a need. He built a business to meet the need. You had a problem. There was a challenge in the community. He built a business to solve that challenge and overcome it. We're right here in the exact same situation, and many, recovering from COVID. And many of the firsts from that time, the first areas of possibly dentistry, mm -hmm. just as an example, mm -hmm. that they he was kind of the founding father, per se, of that within our community. He, we like to say he was the merchant prince of Yuma, and from and he built businesses spanning from mercantiles to mortuaries, mm -hmm. everything in between. He was the largest employer in Yuma County, and I might mean, think about it. I mean, if today we're we're just blessed if we can be successful in one business. Mm -hmm. At that time, no internet. Uh, communication was not the greatest uh, so and and of course technology was virtually non-existent uh, in a well I shouldn't say that but in in many areas mm -hmm. that we enjoy today and yet he was able to run all these businesses and I will share with you the secret of his success when you come into the museum I not gonna it. give it away yeah we want we want to we want to make sure that we leave something for for the people that oh, yes. actually want to there's visit. a little plenty. such a tea Jana <laughs> now one of the things that continues you know, even when the the indoor accessibility to the the public is limited at the museum, the amazing grounds have to be kept up. I mean, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Yes, thank you. The grounds are truly enchanted. It, uh, we have had the most beautiful weddings there, and events, and. You know, I've seen so many of them, but I get choked up. Mm -hmm. I, it's like I'm seeing it for the first time. It is just, 
It is a magical environment. And I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Sabrina. Have you seen the movie Sabrina with Harrison Ford? It was a, Audrey Hepburn was in the original, uh -huh. but, but there was a remake. The final scene, Harrison Ford and his beautiful girlfriend are in a garden at night under a beautiful little canopy and they kiss and the whole garden lights up with twinkle lights. It, it just is magic, pure magic. That is what we experience at the Sanguinetti House. It is that feeling of wonder and fantasy almost that makes the Sanguinetti House such a desirable venue for, for weddings. But right now we're quiet. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's, it's sad for you guys, but I know it's sad for people in the community because some have dreamed of having their weddings at that location. So much history there. That's it. Being married at a museum? My goodness, that is such a differentiator mm -hmm. from being married in, in other venues. I and mean, now everyone has their own dream. So there's, uh, but if you have that heart for history, you want something really unique, uh, the Sanguinetti House Museum and Gardens, and eventually the Molina Block down the road will be fabulous. But right now, we are quiet. Well, Yana, how can listeners, and we're, we're, we're recording it, it's just not on Facebook Live right now. We'll, we'll get that uploaded later <laughs> yes. for those who want to go back and, back and watch it. How, I think it's coming back, so fingers ooh. crossed. <laughs> how can people support the museum? So much love channels to the museum in so many different ways. Um, but I'll say a very simple thing that people can do is become a member of the Arizona Historical Society. You just go to our website, Arizona Historical Society, uh, just Google it and you'll see membership. Membership is a way to just own a little chunk of the Sanguinetti House. You're a, you're a, you're a fan and there are benefits, of course, to membership. Also, donations of, of financial donations, financial donations. I, I cannot tell you, how, ladies, how hard I can squeeze a penny. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what you can do. And there are all kinds of special projects that we need funders mm -hmm. for. Uh, and I would like to do a shout out to Mark Hansberger, who came to our rescue. He is sponsoring, him. Hansberger Refrigeration is sponsoring um, a book that I'm working on, a, a booklet, mm -hmm. uh, uh, detailing um, stories of the historic buildings in Yuma's downtown. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just going to be a little booklet, but it will explain what happened within their walls in a century past. It will be fascinating. That's just an example of how someone in our community rose up and said, you know what, I'm here to help. That is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. I was just blown away. And, and there, there, again, we've, we've mentioned this before. We've taken the tours, you know, that you used to have mm -hmm. um, pre-COVID. Um, and there's <laughs> so much history in our downtown buildings. I, it, and your team does a great job at uh, explaining and, and really t envisioning and, and embodying the person of that era and telling you the story and making them come alive. Are you going to have those tours come back in fall? We are. Because some of them yes, are spooky. Yes. Some oh, of them yes. are spooky. We, we love haunted history, and that's kind of the dark side of Yuma's past. You know, some <laughs> of the very strange and creepy murders that took place, that's, that's mm -hmm. for people who don't mind a, a a chill thrill. Um, <laughs> and then the historic Yuma walking tours. Uh, we are uh, looking for talent. Ooh. Yes, we are looking for we tour. We have a lot of talent. Well, we, I know, you, well, you too. Well, no, I mean, like in the community. <laughs> in the community. Oh, yes. We have a big theater scene, and those we are the types sure of, of talent you're looking that, for. Yes, yes, because we will help you with the history. But uh, the, we lost our beloved Steve Cook, not, oh. uh, I mean, he, from Yuma, uh -huh. he from moved. Yuma, he, he lives. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a ghost there. No. He's a ghost. <laughs> no. Uh, but we are going to be hiring a uh, storyteller tour guides for it. our downtown history tours. So, you know, I, I love that, that incredible blend of entertainment and education. Mm -hmm. To me, that, 
that's the way a lot of people find joy in learning. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for people who can bring that to the public. So we'll, you know, follow us on Facebook, yeah. Sanguinetti House Museum Facebook. That's where we're going to be posting all these opportunities and updates on what's happening with the museum. And all of the info, you can find it there. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Always a pleasure. Lucas. And Martha says, cool. <laughs> that sounds really cool. And and that, that means our Sunset that? Health yes. Facebook live feed is back Yes, up. the feed is back up. And I, I received a private message. Someone's like, my daughter would be ideal for that. Ooh. And I concur. <laughs> so we'll, we'll keep you posted. Okay. We are thank going. You. Thank you so much for joining us today, Yana. We appreciate you, all that you do and love to see you when you're able to come into the show. Yes. Always a pleasure. We are going to take our Lotus Day Spot and Salon Selfie out in the courtyard. So get your phone ready for that, Teresa, because okay. we're doing double duty. No. Pretty Delicious has two phones right now. <laughs> She's doing an arm workout today. <laughs> she is. Today in Yuma is brought to you by Yuma Winelson, a locally owned plumbing supply company within a national organization. That means low pricing and a large selection. They say we're pros like you. And Sprague Sports can help you keep cool this summer with their indoor shooting range. 10 lanes, 25 yards, climate controlled, state of the art ventilation, plus more lanes, new facility, and remodeled range coming soon. Stop by Sprague's on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And Advocate Pest is a locally owned and operated plumbing. I'm, they're a pest control company, <laughs> not a plumbing supply company. <laughs> But you know what? It's ant season. Oh. I, and they've set up multiple condos in my yard. Oh, so no. yeah, advocate, mine too. I'm going to be giving you a call a bit later today. Plus, we need to take care of any of those spider situations. That's right. They've been awesome, though, at uh, keeping my pigeons away. That's what I love. You can find them online, or you can go to any of the social media platforms <laughs> yeah. and send them a message that way. That's Advocate Pest. And Ed Whitehead's Tire Pros is hiring. Tire Lube Techs, ASE Certified Technician, Service Manager, Sales Associate. All applicants must have a current Arizona driver's license. You can apply in person at 965 South 4th Avenue. And plasma centers are part of the nation's critical infrastructure. When you donate plasma today, you can help others and earn some extra money. $1,000 for 10 donations. Wow. Call Chalicris Plasma Resources at 782-2101 for more information. We'll be back after the break with Dave Coulter talking about rebuilding Kennedy Park. Oh, show the burn. Show the burn. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that arm workout in, yes. Chloe. <laughs> On to nothing. Oh, we, we can go out that way. Okay. I'm going to spray. Go ahead. All right. Spray I am Dita Hannah. Can open hands, please. Please. hands are cool today. Oh, it's breathing. Yeah, it's... Whoa! I didn't know you were coming out. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, let's see if I hit my head. Okay. I don't want to stand in front of you. Oh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. We're, we're going to do it like we're this. We're going to do it all in. Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so you much. Guys. Have a good luck. It's not going to stay. We're going to have to lock it, otherwise, it's not going to stay closed. Yeah, you have today. to jiggle the handle. It's a pain. It's almost like an old toilet. Jiggle it. <laughs> jiggle it. Hey, David, come on in. I should be on it. Come on in. You have a seat right there. I wish I would have found this sooner. I was. So I, 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 that way we could be involved like the whole way. So we have a nice large group of roller skaters. So I'm like, oh my gosh, we want to do what we can to be a part of this. We struggle we just like any hands. other skater in town. Yeah. Um, Octopus. In fact, some girls got kicked off before they were skating this morning. So it would be really awesome to be able to oh, wow. put it in there too. Yeah, so. I know roller skating is getting super popular now. Yeah. Especially at skate parks. I've yeah. seen it a lot in California and Phoenix. Oh yeah, and, and I'm not about the, the, the skate park actual like bowls and, uh, and things just give me a flat piece of concrete <laughs> you know yeah we'll talk about it more but i'm excited because you think that's some big things with it already so we'll, 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 we'll inform the we'll inform the community and just kind of give that that little details there and then you can share this hopefully 
Yeah, yeah I post I posted the live right now in our group. Did you so. do the second one? Because the there's second a second one. Yeah, yeah, okay. I saw the first one. Like, it's been happening. Hopefully it stays up. Yeah, since Friday, um, it's been happening. If not, it's recording, so we should be able to still post it later. Yeah, um, but I didn't quit this one yet. It's been off and on. Like, yeah. only reason I know is because our camera for our front gate it goes yellow uh, when it goes out, and I'm like. Jen, this is not a good sign. It hasn't turned back yet. <laughs> it's just doing what it wants. Yeah. It, it really is. All right, here we go. About 20 seconds. There's our bear cubs. <laughs> I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. I caught and removed from the White House and placed in the zoo. Could have been talking about a vice president or something. What's that? Could have been talking about a vice a vice president or something. <laughs> Play <Suzu. laughs> All right, here we go. I believe it was John Quincy Adams that received the alligator. <laughs> and from another country, that would be like a major thing, you know. It's their wealth; they have one. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. Joining us now is David Coulter. Welcome, David. Hello. Well, we are excited to, well, I know I'm excited to have you in because <laughs> this is something that's pretty close to my heart. Um, so you are kind of uh, leading the charge when it comes to this initiative that the city, you're actually partnering with the city of Yuma on this. I, I, I can go ahead and say that. Yeah, we can say that. I've been reaching out to uh, Couple uh, city council member Chris Morris. He's the one who kind of started. Chris Moore, sorry. He's the one who kind of started this thing mm -hmm. uh, about a year ago. Uh, put in the work. He owns the local skate shop, Gracias Madre. So mm -hmm. I reached out to him, and uh, he pointed me in the direction of our parks and rec director, Jason. Now, so been working with him. I guess you can call me a skate park advocate. I love want. it. I love <laughs> it. it. You know, it's it's needed in our community. For a long time, we didn't have a skate park, and again, we're talking about the rebuilding of Kennedy Skate Park. And if anyone has been there recently, um, it, it's been through a lot. Yeah. It's been through a lot. Definitely. So kind of give us an idea for people. <clears throat> like I said, I wish I would have found out about this a little bit sooner. Um, but I'm glad that we have you here because the ball is really rolling. So yeah. give us an idea of what's going what's going to be taking place and and the meetings that are you're going to be they're going to be holding. Yeah, and it, it is going really fast. I just jumped on this about a month ago, and and uh, we already got meetings set up and everything. So basically. Um, reached out to the city and they, they informed me that there's a capital improvement program that they have funded for rebuilding the skate park that's so awesome. and this is that's an that's already a great first step because money has always been an issue with the skate park but basically reached out offered any help we could um i I'm a little out of the skate scene. I'm a little older than most skaters right now, but I still ride a skateboard. But I, uh, I, I roller skate. Um, yeah. I don't. You're not going to catch me doing yeah. tricks, but you will catch me riding my sons around. So <laughs> yeah. But, but what's amazing is the Yuma skate community is awesome. And it is, and I it's agree. large. Yeah, and that actually is. I'm su I'm really surprised. I've got kids from like 10 years old all the way up to you know one of our guys that I work with is in his 40s. So. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great to see and a lot of people rallying around. And that's one thing with the skate park that we haven't seen in the past. Um, it's been very niche and very small groups going to the city. And one thing I know the city likes to see is a lot of people being interested in things. So we're hoping basically July 6th coming up, we have a uh, meeting with the city, with the Parks and Rec Director. It's kind of our first one, just an intro, kind of a placement just to see where we're at, uh, provide some history on the park, What locals have done mm -hmm. uh, meeting with a few guys that have talked with the city in the past and uh, just kind of inform them of that history of the city and skaters and what we've worked on and and the skate uh, Kennedy skate park is is not just used by skaters I mean yeah. we have a large uh, BMX community and and they are out there on their bikes if you drive by even in the heat if you drive by the skate park at any given day you're gonna see a park full of kids yeah yeah, and I, I say skaters because that's what I of course, associate of course, with, of course, of course. But yeah, skaters, bikers, there's kids on scooters, uh, roller skaters, of mm -hmm. course. Um, yeah, I just was there the other day putting up some flyers, and a couple kids were out there riding their bikes in the heat of the day. I, I was like, you guys are insane. But yeah, it, even, <laughs> but it's even as it's and, and you know, we love that. Is, yeah. Well, David and Teresa, you also, because you're familiar with it, give us an example of some of the improvements that are really needed at the skate park. For instance, I mean the the flooring has lots of cracks in it. Um, pretty dangerous as from a safety perspective. Lots of cracks. Um, a lot of the stuff was built back in 2000, 
and kind of designed by local contractors, which is fine, but not with that skate park or that skateboarder or that biker mindset. Input, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it is unfortunately unskatable right now mm -hmm. or unbikeable. Um, just the transitions are a little too steep and everything. And unfortunately, back in 2010, there was a lot of ramps that were donated by a local church here, and pretty much all of them have fallen apart and uh, were taken out of service and never put back. So. And and it, there's a lot of ramps that you know that are there even. The ones that are there the wood is yeah. rotting yeah not safe to no. uh, you know no. at the top of the ramps you want to be safe up there yeah. and i don't lean on them yeah. you know so you want to we want to do what we can to make it safe again yeah. um like you said cracks are detrimental to yeah. skateboard well, skates yeah. wheels of any sort 2000 was 21 years ago yeah you think 21 of, years ago of yeah. the different projects done to extend the life of our roadways as well as standard sidewalk repairs that are done yeah they because they get a lot of traffic, as does the skate park. Yeah. So those services need to be repaired at the, you know, at, at a, a juncture ever so often anyway, yeah. just to keep it safe for those yeah. who are spending their time there. And I, you know, I was mentioning it before, you know, skaters in general uh, get a bad rap, you know, and it's hard. Before the skate park, it was much harder. Um, that was back when I was actually riding my skateboard more yeah. um, transitioned yet to a longboard and, and roller skates but you know I was speaking about it this morning a lot of the places where we roller skate we thankfully we we have some a few spots where you know the courts and things like that where the basketball players and things like that were, are, are gracious enough to share that that spot with us but I mean I had a group of girls this morning get kicked off an area that they were skating at um, so it, it's it's a matter of kind of trying to find something that works for everyone yeah. and you're gonna do kind of a pre planning meeting yeah so next saturday on july 3rd we just want to get a group of locals skateboarders anybody kids parents everybody together kind of get everybody on board where we're at um what we hope to bring to the city maybe get some like, design ideas mm -hmm. i mean we've got people reaching out that are willing to write you know paperwork for oh, grants yeah, and definitely. everything i mean design we, i've had a welder reach out to me so if we can just get as many people as possible my main hope is, is that for July 6th, when we go in there with the city, we can get a large group of people in. What, what time is the gr uh, meeting on the 3rd? So the meeting on the 3rd is going to be at the skate park at 6.30. I know it's a little warm then, so, I mean, if you want to come out a little bit after once the sun sets, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to be, me personally, I'm going to bring out some drinks, have a shade and everything, mm -hmm. and just kind of talk with everybody. It's going to be really informal, nothing, I'm not going to stand just on the stage. Just kind of get an yeah. idea, Give yeah. if you have some input, something you would like exactly. to see, you know, we, we want to get all of that together before you get to the city. I will be, I'm going to do my best to make it on Saturday, but I definitely will be there on the 6th. If, if people can't, is there a way they can submit information to you or ideas they may have? So we have a Facebook group, um, Rebuild Kennedy Skate Park. If you look us up, you should be able to find us a public group. And we'll, um, sh we'll share it as well. Yeah, and that's pretty much where most of our information is. I try to post on there as soon as I get information, uh, me and a couple admins as well. Mm -hmm. The, the the meeting on the 6th, is that going to take place at City Hall? That will be at City Hall at and 5 And is it going to be in the lobby area? Or? Um, apparently there's going to be signs, so directing we'll traffic. Okay. So um, 5 p.m. at 5 City Hall? 5 p.m. at City Hall, yes. Perfect. Again, you know what? I, I love the idea. I'm glad that we have someone like you to advocate <laughs> for it and put everything together because we all have great ideas. And to, this is the way, you know, for anybody listening, this is the way to get things done yeah. in Yuma. There's a lot of times people want to complain. We don't have this. We don't have this. So for you to step up and kind of spearhead this and kind of put everything into one place where we can all work together as a team to, to get this done is, is fantastic. So thank you for thank doing you. that. Yeah, I'm you. glad I found right. it. And if there's capital improvement funding available, yeah. why not use it? Exactly. Yeah. People always complain there isn't enough stuff for our mm -hmm. kids to do. And exactly. this is something, again, that can be used for all ages and it's a kind of a multi-purpose area. But as a community, we need you to step forward and submit any ideas that you may have. Again, this, this skate park, like you said, has been around for 21 years now. It's it's going to be around for a lot longer still, so we want to do what we can to, to make it great for not only for us and for our kids, but, you know, for, for you know, we have a lot of people that come into our town and yeah. look for these places when they're visiting, those types of things. So we want to make it a, a best place we can for everyone involved. So, again, we encourage you, get involved. Fine. We will. We will definitely share the page. Rebuild Kennedy Park again, and and try and show up again. You know, this is this is something that the community has always asked for, mm -hmm. and we want to do what we can to take care care of it and make it bigger and better. Yeah, definitely, most well, definitely. Great, great information. Thank you for helping spearhead this. It's yes, important. It's important yeah. for our community, David.
All right, we are going to take our Lotus Day Spa and Salon selfie with David out in the courtyard. We'll be back with more of the Today in Yuma show on Z93 and Outlaw Country. Lisa's excited. She's she gonna be flying to Texas. Thank you, David. All right, thank you guys very much. Our pleasure. I'll get that link shared too for the page right. later. And I'll, I'll include those dates in my new stuff so people okay. hear it. Yeah. But it's a good, I mean, everybody always complains, but to actually get out and support mm -hmm. it, that's what make sure what, that's that the, the money that's there is used made. correctly. Yeah. Exactly. Why put it on stuff that's not going to last exactly. or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Or not used. <laughs> and now it's on record. No. But you're doing something. But I don't know if he's ever been here, so I had to tell him how to get out. Same uh, place I was telling, <clears throat> talking about last time, but this time it was a city employee, so yeah. I wanted to use it, so. which is fine. Yeah, if that if that's yeah. the intended purpose, exactly. That, I, and that's I, what I get. That that's what the law enforcement had told them before when they didn't get kicked out last time. Um, but they're like, if somebody wants to use this okay. facility, then yeah. you guys need to you have to come. Yeah, yeah. And, you don't and that wanna, was the case this morning. And, and, of course, and you also don't want to wreck it. No, no. For what th those needs are, because yeah. it's not really. Well, they actually so that needs. area they don't actually get on that court. There's a large enough area around it, so you're not messing up the play court. Good. Um, so, but they were able to find another place uh, a little bit down the way, and it worked, it worked out right. So, but it's it's hard, you know. It's it's not an easy thing to find. Now they're adults that have become the rebels. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not being, we're not being rebels. We want to work together. When we were back in Safford, because I spent time over by their fine arts where I did all the, the pictures, and it's, it's at the college, and there's so many walking ramps and stuff to get to the different areas mm -hmm. of the auditorium, and there's multiple signs about no skateboards, no bicycles, mm -hmm. no skating, because some of those areas, too, if you're coming around a corner, you, can't you won't see. know if someone is coming yeah, up, and some of them are kind of hidden walls, so yeah. pedestrian traffic only. They have two skate parks now. Nice. There's in Safford? One, one in Safford and one in Thatcher, which is next door. Nice. All right, here we go. The Today in Yuma phone lines are open. Give Jennifer and Teresa a call at 782 No, because I can't answer that right now. <laughs> Don't. Don't call. Don't I call. can't answer right now. <laughs> You're not answering the phone right now. All hands on deck. <laughs> or the gate. Literally. I'm, I'm like, All hands on deck. I'm like, mm. <laughs> you need to get a picture of her. <laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. If you are watching us on the Sunset Health Facebook live feed, Foodie Licious is doing double duty because she's, we went ahead and started recording the show so I can upload it later because our internet was down for part yes. of it. So when Facebook Live came back up, she's using my phone for that and the show phone for an other video. For the actual yeah. video yes. so we can upload the whole So if you show. see Wiggles, so I'm sorry, I'm trying. I hope her nose doesn't itch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rude because you know now it's no, going to start. No, you made start. it. Put, that put is, it out there. That is so mean. Uh, I hope she makes you scratch it. <laughs> I'll just Here's wipe it on her. <laughs> All right, we have a busy week coming up as we get ready to approach the Independence Day holiday. Yes. And coming up tomorrow, we have Toro Tuesday. Yes. And then coming up on Wednesday, we have Sarah Wisdom. Which she'll be back. She'll be back from her vacation from yes. the library. We also have Louis Galavis and we have Angelica Roldan and Lizette Varela joining us from the city of San Luis. Mm -hmm. They're going to be talking about their Independence Day event. Yes. And our WTF gal Anita will be joining us on Wednesday also. I wait. I don't think she will. Is, she? Is it? Oh, no. No, she's Thursday. on Thursday. Okay. 
I'm just making top secret project. Trying to keep my days in order here. <laughs> hey, I, I'm like on July 8th already. July 8th. I don't even of know. What 1880. Today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm getting ready to sign the the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> All right, and then we have a little bit later in the week because I only printed through Wednesday. We have Brisa Garcia joining us from the city of Somerton. Yay! They're they're doing Fourth they of are. July. We'll hear about her adventures in Chicago. I know. I'm excited. And. Foodie Delicious will be joining us also. So get your entries in. We have two giveaways, mm -hmm. and we'll be doing Diamondback ticket giveaways a little bit later Ooh, today. Wa fun. Watch our social media for that. But go to monstermediayuma.com, click on Anita's WTF tab, yes. where you can enter to win a $20 Visa card courtesy of Heather Hummer Farmers Agency. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, head on over to the Foodie Delicious tab. Her neighbor. Enter to win a $25 gift card from Burgers and Bear. That's right. Again, there's so much going on uh, at MonsterMediaYuma.com. We encourage you kind of flip around. There's a lot of things. We're still taking community hero entries. We are. And this week's community hero is Michael Stafford. Mm -hmm. He is one of the drivers for Precious Treasures Mission in Somerton. Yes. And Elizabeth had sent us the information about him just being a, a remarkable citizen and helping out a gentleman in need mm -hmm. who is suffering from heat exhaustion. The day she called and shared that story with me, and I said... Go ahead and write, write up the down. information. Mm -hmm. Share it with me. She said right after we had our conversation, he drove past another individual on the side of the road. Oh, no. And he has since then, what he does is he carries umbrellas with him and he keeps extra water mm -hmm. in the event he needs to provide assistance because he's out and about driving around all day long. Yeah, picking so, up stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for what you did. You likely could have been um, the person that saved that man's life. Oh, definitely. He, he called 911. He stayed there till they arrived, and once they were administering first aid to the gentleman, he went ahead and got back out on his route. But we encourage you, if you're in a similar situation and you see people in need, we need to call 911 and yes. make sure that we get medical care en route. These extreme temp we don't know that it's heat related. They may have suffered a cardiac event. Mm -hmm. But in any case, if you see someone in, in need, please let's get medical responders en route as mm -hmm. soon as possible. Most definitely. And, and there's a, we see it a lot. You know, we, we have a, home, a large homeless population. We also have a large community that likes to ride bikes and walk. Um, maybe they don't have a vehicle. So they have to get, they're trying to, maybe they're trying to get to work and they misjudge the heat. Um, it happens. So we encourage you, keep your eyes out. Just, you know, these are the type of, of heroes that we're looking for. And he may not feel he's a hero, but he's definitely a hero in, his, in our eyes. He's done, he may have, like Jennifer said, may have saved that person's life. So again, it doesn't have to be a grand gesture. No. And, and you, if you have someone you want to recognize for the community hero, they can win a prize. They can. Go to monstermediayuma.com. If you look at the tabs across the top, the second tab is Community Hero. Mm -hmm. You can submit their information there. Exactly. Again, there's lots going on there. You can view our local monsters. We're always looking for local talent. Um, please, you can contact me here at the station. Um, again, there's so much going on. Um, in our community if you have something going on that you'd like us to share please let us know yes we would love to know about it and we understand some people your schedules might conflict with the show maybe you can't be on as a guest send us the information we're more than happy to talk about it for you but if you would like to be on the show absolutely reach out we will check schedules and see what may align and have you come in and share your event with the community yes definitely again this week uh, on thursday because i am now remembering off the top of my head mike erford and sergeant Lori franklin are joining us very timely mike's with the yuma fire department Lori is with the yuma police department we're going to be talking about fireworks yes mike's going to talk about it from the the fire side. the terrible fire perspective mm -hmm. uh, of the things that can happen and Lori's going to be talking about the law enforcement perspective exactly and we encourage you please be cautious some people will probably be starting the celebrations a little sooner some have already yes with with the fireworks you're not within the legal window to do so yet correct and remember if it goes up in the air it's not legal keep that in mind sun's action tonight sun's action 6 p.m versus clippers game 
five. Yes. Suns up three games in the series, 6 p.m. on Outlaw Country. All right. Tune in for Rally in the Valley, <laughs> even though we're not their valley. But, hey, we're, we're part of that. We're, we, we will embrace it all. We certainly will. Be safe out there, everyone. And remember, take extra water with you if you're heading out somewhere. Most definitely. Up next on Z93, we bring you the Bob and Sherry Show. And Outlaw Country brings you your favorite classic country music. And, again, all your Phoenix Suns action and Arizona Diamondbacks. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Goodbye, ladies. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you, foodie.